What is good to the family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's going on with Tesla, Spy, Nvidia, the QQQ, and a couple of other tickers. I'm going to break down what's going on with the economic calendar thus far and some very important updates about earnings. And also what's happening with Elon Musk as there's a very, very big piece of news that came out that's important for him and Tesla. Before I break anything to all this information, before I break down what's happening with Tesla stock, let me just mention a couple of things. Firstly, I am not a financial planner, so take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please check out the Moomoo link, which is down below and in the description. If you sign up for Moomoo, the link down below and deposit $100 into the account, you are guaranteed up to five free stocks. If you deposit $1,000, you're guaranteed up to 15 free stocks, and the offer ends very soon. Anyways, now let's break down what's going on with Tesla. Tesla dropped very hard after the news came out that the judge denied Elon Musk's uh, his basically his pay package to get about 56 billion dollars uh so after that happened tesla dropped very very hard all the way down to 182.5 and since then as i predicted i told you that as long as tesla doesn't break 180 we should see a rebound and that's what's trying to happen right now we're also starting to form a bullish triangle so there's is there's a potential you know upward momentum that could be developing right here but in order for this to develop we have to break this resistance so i'll be talking more about this a little bit later on about how tesla could be affected by this also the overall market i'm also going to talk about fomc which is going to be later on for today so what's happening for today 15 minutes after the market opens we have the chicago pmi report this could affect spy and all these different tickers so make sure you watch that very carefully watch for volatility at 9 45 a.m eastern standard time 15 minutes after market open and besides that there's going to be a couple of hours of just free time where the market's just going to get time to shuffle not really do much because then at two o'clock p.m we have the interest rate hikes decision coming out from the fed according to the reports there's a 97.9 percent chance the fed is just going to keep rates unchanged they're not going to raise rates they're not going to cut rates they're just going to keep them uh, as they were basically there's a 97 plus percent chance that's going to happen and then at 2 30 p.m eastern standard time we have the fed press conference coming out that's when jerome powell is going to give his speech so he's going to either cause the market to pump or dump we'll be watching this very very carefully now what else is affecting the markets uh, is going to be earnings at least more towards like thursday for today earnings are very very minor we just had boeing and just a couple of others boeing basically had better earnings than expected, a more narrow loss than expected, but it held off on the 2024 guidance as the 737 MAX 9 crisis is still looming. And you could see right here, their adjusted EPS loss was below what was expected, which is not bad. Sales were above expectations, beating on revenue. So they, they did pretty well for earnings, but they didn't really give us guidance because of the current crisis. Now, when it comes to news affecting the markets, Basically, we have FOMC for today, and this is saying the same thing I told you. There's a 97% chance, the, <coughs> excuse me, there's a 97% chance the Fed is going to keep rates the same. Besides that, I went over the earnings yesterday for Google and Microsoft. Uh, basically, for Alphabet, they saw a bigger drop because of what happened with their ad revenue. But for Microsoft, they actually had mixed earnings. So it wasn't really like too bad, too great. Uh, most things were beats, but there were some talks about... Uh, revenue not increasing up to every single standard so kind of like i would say overall it was pretty good for microsoft but it wasn't really enough for this thing to just explode alphabet however saw a move to the downside after what happened to their ad revenue with boeing i just went over this they had a more narrow loss than expected uh for the first three months of the year and going forward we'll be watching to see how this continues for UPS, they're cutting 12,000 jobs. And we have the Elon Musk news about the Delaware judge that's also making headlines. So basically, Elon, Elon Musk cannot keep the Tesla pay package from 2018, where it's 55 to $56 billion, according to the Delaware judge. Uh, basically, they mentioned that there's not enough evidence that this is a fair plan. They're probably like weighing in Elon Musk's time being spent in Tesla and other factors like that. So that's very, very important. Uh, Elon Musk also... Uh, you know, he he mentioned that he wants 25% voting control over Tesla. And this is one of the ways he could have acquired about 21% of the stake in Tesla. Uh, but he ended up not being able to achieve that through that, at least for now. So that just means that it's not the end of the world. It's just that Tesla has to come up with another pay compensation package plan for Elon Musk. So we'll have to see what they could come up with. And we'll see if this could actually get through litig litigation, the courts, and etc. So I'll be waiting to see if anything comes out for that. For Tesla, what's going on with the share price? Well, we're forming kind of like a bullish triangle right here. But we have this resistance to be watching for around this 187 zone. So 187.5 around that range. 
We also have supports. If we do get a big rejection, we have some support here. We, the more critical support is closer to 184. If we lose that, there's 182.5. And if we lose that, 180 comes next. So what do I think Tesla is doing? We're forming a nice bullish triangle right here. It's attempting to push up. We have this type resistance. When we open, they could come... The market could sink a bit and we could grab a little bit of liquidity below. So we could see Tesla drop just a little bit and push back up and continue to form this bullish triangle, this ascending triangle, if you want to go that route. And this might actually lead to Tesla pushing higher a little bit later. So it might drop first, then push a little higher later on during the day. It's the higher 180s get very close to 190. And I think it's just going to trade sideways after that. We technically have a gap to fill up above here. So it might attempt to get a breakout from here if we break above 187.5 to 188 to look for a breakout towards the 190 plus area to fill this gap. Uh, we could see 191 as well. First, we have to try to break out above this 187.5 to 188 resistance. Once we break this, look for a push to the upside, then sideways price action after that, as the market tends to trade sideways right before FOMC. So I think Tesla might come down, grab liquidity, and attempts to break this resistance. If we break 188, look for a push to fill this gap up here. Then we might reject and just trade sideways throughout the day until we get to the FOMC meeting when Jerome Powell is going to cause a very, very big move. So hopefully that was clear enough, guys. I don't want to be like uh, too confusing, if anything. And I see something similar happening to SPY. So I think that SPY might drop a little bit, grab liquidity in the 488 area. could go a little lower. Then we might see some buyers try to push it back into the 490 area. Buyers might step in, try to push it back up. We might just see a lot of sideways price action after that at the higher levels because I think that when we approach the FOMC meeting, the market's going to be very indecisive. Then Jerome Powell is going to cause a big move during his speech, either launching SPY to new all-time highs or giving us the rug pull all the way back down in to the, <coughs> excuse me, the 488 area or even below that. For the QQQ, this is forming a nice reversal structure right now. So I wouldn't be surprised if we actually drop back down closer to the 420 area, grab liquidity, and we'll have to see if this holds. If we lose this, 418 could come. If we try to hold above this, we could be looking for a bounce to come back up to 421 and eventually 422.5. So my best prediction would be we kind of drop and then bounce back to the 422s. Then we trade sideways for many, many hours until we get Jerome Powell. Powell may launch this much higher to fill this gap up here, or we might get a big rug pull. This will depend on what Jerome Powell says. So approaching FOMC, market might drop a little bit more than pump, then trade sideways. And after that, it all depends on Jerome Powell. For NVIDIA, it's the same thing. I wouldn't be surprised if NVIDIA grabs liquidity here. It might pump when we open. So it might outperform the market hitting 622, come back down, and then trade sideways near 620 before we see some kind of reversal. So this might actually help drag the queues up. We might see some sideways price action near this imbalance into the 620s, then watch and see for more volatility after we get some new reports. So I think there might be a drop in pump, sideways price action as time goes on. And once we have the sideways price action, we'll be watching to see what happens with uh, you know, Jerome Powell, does he pump the market higher or not? If he pumps us, NVIDIA is going to retest 630. If he dumps us, NVIDIA is going to be coming back down to 60, uh, 607, basically. For Apple, for Apple, you know, this thing is looking kind of flat right now. It might, it's just range bound in the pre-market. Might retest 186.5, maybe a little lower than push back up to 188. And if it gets a little above that, we might just barely break this and just trade sideways in the 188s for an extended period of time. Then we're going to be watching to see what happens with, uh, you know, the very important report from the FOMC meeting. Do we get a big pump into the 190s or do we get a rug pull back down to 185? That's going to depend on Jerome Powell. So the best thing to do is just wait and see. Watch for Apple to rebound a little bit, try to get back above 188 and trade sideways and watch the levels I have marked over here. With that being said, guys, have a great day. Please take care and I'll see you guys very soon as we get closer to the FOMC meeting. Thank you. Tesla to the moon is long term is still very bright, long set for the markets, and peace out.